I'm going to go through setting up a template real quick. What we have here is a blank schedule. It's the seven day schedule and, and it is a template. The very first thing I'm going to do is save the file. So I'm going to go to the start menu, save as, and we'll just save it to my desktop and we'll call it your schedule. Okay. So now I can actually start filling in the information. You can use this as a project name or uh, let's create a general one for an IT department. So we'll say IT department um, Outlook. And the company will say French Camp Academy. And then we can insert a logo. Uh, notice we're already selected here. I'm going to go to insert. That's pretty big, so let's just reduce that as I uh, grab the corner first and then hold down the shift key. Okay. And then I'm going to press delete on my keyboard so I can delete the company logo here text. And then we can um, move this kind of center it inside there. Okay. Today's date we'll say is the 14th. And the starting week of this project is going to be the 12th. And the first item, let's call the first item uh, IT Office construction and then we're going to need to develop a material list we're going to need to um, get the materials and then frame wall insulate and then paint okay that's roughly what I'm going to need to do I can add more items if I want uh, let's say I wanted to split up the drywall and the insulation. It's actually really easy. I'm just going to select the row, right click, copy, and then select the paint row or the row below it, and insert copied cells, and it puts a new one on top. But wait, our formulas are messed up over here, and so is our numbering schema. That's okay. I'm going to select these three and just drag it down. Okay, it fixed the numbers there. And I'm going to do the same thing right here, all the way across, because I know those formulas are good. And then the last thing I want to do is um, make sure that this formula is looking at the right spot, and it is. Notice that when I copied this down, it added more numbers over here. Well, that's because it automatically counts. So let's just clean this up and enter those as zeros. Uh, you can ignore them if you want, because you know it's not really the case. All right, so our start date is the 12th. That's what we have up here. And in reality, the 12th is actually Sunday. That's not going to work. So let's change the start date to the 13th. Okay, it changed it here and here and all the way down. Now, when you start out, this schedule does not work. It's not working correctly. For example, the start date here is the 13th. The end date is not the 12th. And the start date on this is not the 12th. But that's because of a formula issue in here. All of our dates are zero and our percents are zero. So it's not going to work right. Uh, it's not supposed to work right. It's empty. Okay. So let's start filling this in. Now I know developing the material list is only going to take one day. Okay. Now some might get confused by this because our start date is the 13th and our end date is the 13th. Well, that's because it's one day. All right. But notice our next item on the list is now starting on the 14th. Well, that makes sense. That's the very next day. You can mathematically formulate this so that it doesn't do that. So for example, let's say material lists are only going to take me one day, not even a day. It's going to take me a half a day to really generate a material list. I'll spend the rest of that day getting the materials. So it's not really going to be on the 14th. I'm just going to go in here, press the equal button on my keyboard, and just equal that date. Okay, because it's the same thing. And I'll put one in here as well. You can do 0.5, but it doesn't work because we're rounding these numbers up. So go ahead and do a one. And then use these formulas in here to mathematically adjust it. So for example, this formula here is looking to the previous task end date to figure out when the start date is, and it's adding one. Let's say framing the wall, we've got the materials. We'll have the materials on site on the 13th, which is Monday, okay? But let's say we're actually not going to frame the walls until maybe Friday, all right? So if this is the 13th, 14th, 15th, 16th, 17th, you can see why it's important to have a calendar in front of you. 
On the 17th is when I'm actually going to frame the wall. That's four days later, okay? So I'm actually gonna go in here and edit my formula. You can do it up in your formula bar or you can do it in the cell, that's okay, either way, and click four, okay? So that means this task item does not start until the 17th and framing the walls, let's say that's gonna take me, really it's gonna take me two full days to frame the walls, okay? If I put two days in here, that's great and everything, but it's not really the working days that I have. In other words, if I were to count Monday through Friday, I only get one day of working into that. So I've got to look at my schedule, see where I'm falling, and make sure that I'm paying attention to my working days because that's not exactly true. What I actually need to do is say that I'm going to have Friday and Monday as my two days of working. And that number of days is actually four. There are four physical 24-hour periods between those two dates and I'm gonna put four in here because that's the duration of the item duration on the calendar that task item is going to go the duration uh, is gonna go through four days we get two working days out of the deal now if you count Saturdays as your working day well then you can adjust it that way as well so if you counted Saturdays as your working days then you can disregard this working days column okay uh, or you can mathematically change it because it's going to count networking days and we would just add one more day on top of it. Okay, So I'm not going to count Saturdays. I'm going to keep it simple and we're going to go four duration days. Enter into that. I've got two work days out of it and I've got four days remaining to complete the task. Okay. Next we're going to install the wiring. Notice here my start date is the 21st. See how the formula is working? Install wiring one day install the data one day but you know what we can do them both in the same day it's a little project so I'm gonna do the same thing here take out the plus one alright insulate and drywall Oh, we added the row we added that extra task here so let's clean this up we're not actually going to insulate and drywall here and uh, we're gonna just do one and the other so insulate and drywall I think the insulation process is gonna take us one day and the drywall well, we all know drywall takes a little more than one day. It goes up fast, but we also have a lot of mud work to do. So let's see where we're at. The last item is ending on a Wednesday. So if I start drywalling, I can probably start drywalling the same day I insulate. At least get it up there and get the first coat on. Okay, so let's do this. We're going to go this start date is equal to the same start date or the same uh, end date as the insulation. And... I'm going to anticipate that I've got one day of putting up sheetrock and one day of mudding, so two work days, and then I'm going to come back and apply another coat of mud at least maybe two more times uh, with the sand in there as well. So I'll probably come back the first time, my first revisit to this, uh, we'll, we'll put another coat on, and the second time maybe do a rough sand and put a final coat on. So four days. But again, let's look at where we are with the schedule. Uh, that lands me on Saturday. That's not going to work. So I've actually got to add two more days to my duration to get me finished up on Monday. So we're going to go six days here. And the paint, uh, the paint, let's give it two days uh, just in case the uh, base coat doesn't dry fast enough. So we're going to go two days here. And of course, that starts us on Tuesday, Wednesday. So we're good to go. Okay. And then I can start on my next item. And let's say the next item would be um, moving furniture. So moving furniture, let's see, task items. We're going to unpack, um, assembly, and move, and clean. Now, I don't need these other items here, so I'm just going to highlight those rows, right-click, and delete. Oh, it broke my schedule. That's okay. Look, all I have to do is take this cell here and copy it to here. That's one option. Option number two is to, um, let me just back out of this, is simply to say, well, this value here, this date is going to equal the end date of my last task in the previous group. So let's just do equals, in this case here, it's going to be E22, column E, row 22, and hit enter. Everything else is going to work the same because we deleted those rows uh, Excel is smart enough to figure that out and realize that it's got to modify its formulas. Now adding rows, it doesn't work that way. If you add a row after 2.4 here, it's going to break and, and you're going to spend a lot of time working on it. 
So let's say that we wanted to add some more rows. You know, I, I need to come back in here. I need to add some more rows. So I'm just going to copy a couple rows above, select the bottom row, right click, insert copied cells, and that way my formulas grew with the expansion of my list. Notice how they still go all the way down. Uh, I, I did that so that I wouldn't have to manipulate each one of those formulas. So basically the rule of thumb here is copy and remove inside your first and last items in your task list. Simple, fast, easy to do, okay? Now I don't actually need those items, so let's get rid of them. Here's two and three, right click, delete. No mix up on the formulas because we've already fixed it and I can keep going now. Let's say unpacking is going to take me two days and that two days is going to land me on Wednesday, Thursday, but notice it's tasked on top of the previous task, which was painting. Painting is supposed to end on the 29th, and they've got me unpacking. I'm, I'm set right now to start unpacking on the 29th. That's not going to work. I don't like to work inside fresh painted areas, so let's push this back a day, okay? And we can do that two ways. Either double click in the cell and add a plus one there, or you could do it in the formula bar up here at the top, okay? Either way. All right, so unpacking two days, that lands me on Thursday, Friday. Uh, let's see, so this next item, assembly, uh, we got a lot of furniture and it's a lot of little pieces. I think it's gonna take me four days to do it. And see here, it pulls us through on Saturday again. That's not gonna work, so I've gotta add two days to it, six days. Six duration days for four work days, okay? And then move in, that won't take very long. We're just gonna go one day there and then clean one day. But the move in and the clean, I think, can be done on the same day. So I'm going to, again, equal those two values. Okay? The last thing I want to show you here is customizing this form as far as the buttons go. Okay? Uh, some of you don't want these buttons showing. That's okay. Let's say I don't want to show this. I'm going to actually send this schedule to uh, somebody for approval or for review. All you have to do is right-click on the frame, right-click again. Notice the line changes here from a dash. See, the first time I do it, it's going to be a dash, a dashed line. Let's do this one over here. See the dashed line? If I right-click one more time, it makes the line solid. That way I know I've got the button, and I can just go to Cut. All right, so I'm going to go through and right-click and cut these out. There we go. And now I don't have buttons. Now, by the way, if the buttons are there, they will not print when you print the form. If you have any questions, contact us at support.constructionofficeonline.com.